Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center at 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.com. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Johnny DiLoretto. This is Cinema Classics. And where are we? The Gateway Film Center, naturally. Uh, summer movie season is underway officially with the release of Avengers 2, oh, gosh, Age yes. of Ultron. Yes. Did you like it? You know, it's like an overstuffed turkey, mm -hmm. but I still feel good. Yeah. It's just way too much. Yeah, yeah, it's much too busy. Yeah. There's extraneous storylines. Yeah. It feels like it's suffering under the weight of expectations, and Joss Whedon, who had such a light magic touch on the first movie, feels like he's, he's just belaboring things at this point, and um, it has a strained quality to it. There are some great quips. <clears throat> there are some great quips, as mm -hmm. always are. Yeah. The best one of the year being after or, uh, Tony Stark has had a bad day. Yeah. He says, it's been a long day, Eugene O'Neill long. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> this is, that's so right, a reference that flies over 99% <laughs> of uh, the audience. Anyway, today. there's some good stuff there to be enjoyed. I'm so, looking forward. Yeah, what are you? What, what other summer well, films I, I want to see Mad Max because I like yeah. Tom Hardy. Right. And I'm thinking, okay, Mel Gibson, that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Tom Hardy is a... Play. Right, and the, the trailer for this movie is... It's just spectacular okay. and breathtaking. Have you seen it? No. You no. haven't seen the trailer? No. The trailer is what I think is responsible for the buzz on this movie. A lot of people want to see okay. this movie. Probably a lot of people that don't even know what Mad Max is. Um, but the trailer is exhilarating. George Miller, the original director of the, uh, the franchise, um, returning to his um, commercial success here, and uh, promising that this movie is essentially a nonstop chase from beginning to end which sounds exciting. So sounds I'm, I'm in. I want to see it too. <laughs> now that's kind of a, I don't know that it's a remake. It's a, it's just a follow-up, I think. Yeah, it is. With uh, Tom Hardy in the original role. On the other side, a little bit fantastic too, is Tomorrowland with George Clooney. Yeah, you know, does that look lot, weird? A lot of people are excited about this movie, but I'm not. I don't know why. It no. just looks, it looks like, I don't know if it's based on a Disney ride, but it looks like it's a movie produced based by Disney. on a, I know, but it looks yeah. like a movie based on a game or based on a ride. I don't know. It just looks flaccid and uninteresting to All me. All right, you can't miss though with the next one. Mm. He's one of your favorite actors, mm -hmm. and he's one of mine too. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Oh yeah, the new Mission Impossible. Yeah, movie. Wow. I never really cared about these Mission Impossible movies, but. The last one was really good, very exciting. Tom Cruise is pushing the boundaries of what he can do as a 50-plus-year-old yep. guy. Yep. In this new movie, he hangs from the side of a plane. <laughs> he actually did it. They shot it five times, and he had to wear special contacts to keep his eyes open at that speed. Excellent. Uh, but I just get excited about stuff yep. like that. I, I, I really just do enjoy Tom Cruise as a movie star because he's trying to exercise such quality control over his product. It doesn't always work, but he's more invested in what he does than any other star of his caliber. So I'm with you. I mean, we're probably, it's probably going to be disappointing, but he's always a good time. What about, speaking of, oh, what do you got? <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, kind of closing out our uh, blockbusters, mm -hmm. Fantastic Four has never been the blockbuster that others have been. Uh, right. Let me do that again. Fantastic Four has never been the blockbuster that others have been, mm -hmm. but I'm looking forward to it with Miles Teller. Remember him from Whiplash? Mm -mm. I didn't see Whiplash. Okay, all right. So he's the young guy in Whiplash. You've seen it more. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I don't know. I don't know. It looks that. terrible. <laughs> it looks terrible. It does. You know, they're they're rebooting this movie. They made two of them about ten years ago, and um, those movies were fun, but didn't quite live up to expectations. Okay. And so they're redoing it, and I, it just looks worse. It looks worse. <laughs> Uh, speaking of franchises that could use a shot in the arm, Terminator Genesis. Okay, is this going to have Arnie in it? Yes, oh, well, it does have Arnie. I, I can go in. And it seems kind of cool. He's like, he plays the Terminator, the original Terminator, who's been stuck here. And because of his natural uh, flesh on the outside of his skeleton, his cyborg skeleton, the flesh actually ages. So he looks like he does now, yeah. which I think is kind of cool. It's oh, yeah. sort of like an unforgiven 
version of the term. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, and he's in another film called Maggie this mm -hmm. summer. Yeah, which is going to open probably by the time this airs. Yeah. Uh, he plays the father uh, of a daughter who's succumbing to the zombie virus. Yeah. All right. So, so it looks like a tearjerker zombie movie. What about Poltergeist, the remake of Poltergeist? Well, I'm for it. I'm for it. I love the original. Yeah. And I think, well, why not? Is nothing sacrosanct? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Do you have to go back to every sort of, like, isn't that movie perfect in some way? I know, I know, I know. But it we, would be like remaking The Exorcist. Did they do that? Yeah, I think so. I or there was an Exorcist 2. There's a lot of exorcism yeah, yeah. movies, but... Um, so, I don't know. I've heard good things about Poltergeist as well, and I think it takes a different tack. This one looks grittier, of course. Everything has to be grittier and, you know, more gory, uh, so... Maybe that bodes well for this movie. I don't know. What Talk about? Yeah, go. Yeah, I was hey. gonna say go. Hey, going into the got a lot of movies to cover. Oh, I do. Going into the past, Jurassic World. Yeah, that's the one I was gonna okay. talk about. Okay. Yeah. So again, a lot of people excited. We're at that point um, where we're very nostalgic for the '90s. All right. You know, we we passed. We were nostalgic for the point. '80s. Yeah. At one point, we were nostalgic for the '70s. Before that, the '40s. Uh, so now we're nostalgic about the 90s, which is why you see this Terminator movie, why you see Jurassic World, why you see, well, Mad Max and Poltergeist could take us back to the 80s. But um, Chris Pratt is going to be in it, along with Bryce Dallas Howard, yeah. but who is not in it, the one I really miss, mm -hmm. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I, gosh, he, he was, was always great, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. He's great in those movies. Um, what about Ant-Man? You know what, like Paul Rudd? Mm -hmm. Help me out here. That's great casting. I, I guess so. I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. Well, you don't think so? Why not? I don't know. Because the whole premise of Ant-Man is that here's this this guy who's like a thief. He's kind of like a smarmy, yeah. slick guy who has to find some sort of purpose, higher purpose in his life. And he does that through becoming Ant-Man. So Paul Rudd, you know, let's not forget before he became this, this go-to comedian actor... Paul Rudd was a dramatic actor. Okay, you know, not by it. Um, All right. Okay, so, I'm looking forward to it. That could be fun. Uh, but you know, the one I'm really looking forward to. I know you're kind of, you're just not on top of Woody these days. No, no. But yeah. Woody has Irrational Man coming. I saw that trailer with Joaquin Phoenix yes. and Emma Stone. Yeah. And I was intrigued. All right. And uh, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm if, good. Yeah. If, if you go see it first and you tell me it's worth seeing, I'll, I'll see it. But I probably won't just look. You know, he's going to be a stand-in for Woody. He's a college professor falling for the young student. He right. Probably but I like the whole, like, he's super depressed. Yes. And... Oh, really? Is it? Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks like something I can relate to right now. And I'll have to tell you, Mia Wysikowski is in Madame Bovary. Mm. And that's not, definitely not for everybody. No. But I am anxious to Nor see it. Nor is Far From the Madding Crowd, but I've heard, heard good things Are about Are you kidding that me? That's a beautiful movie. Did you see it? Yes. If you've seen Tess of the Durbervilles or if you saw Ju Julie Christie in mm -hmm. the original Far mm -hmm. From the Madding Crowd, Emma... Watson, yeah, Emma Watson, right, very good. Uh, so it's lovely, beautiful shots, and she's a great heroine. Great. She said, when she's propo first proposal, she says, "Why should I be a man's property?" Huh. All right, this is 1870. Yeah, she's way ahead of her time. Way anyway, ahead of her time. I like it a lot. Written uh, by a man. Well, I know Hardy but, but, had a good insight into women. Wait, I which thought. one are you talking about? Is that Madame Bovary? No, far from the Madding Crowd. Far from the Madding Crowd. That was uh, Hardy. Hardy. Yeah. Thomas Hardy. Yeah. Here's a movie I want to see just based on these. Like, there's no description here on this piece of paper. Yeah, right. I just want to see this movie called Criminal with Kevin Costner and Gary Me too. Oak. And I didn't look it up. <laughs> and I looked at it. I got it written down. You're right on. I said, I have to see him. And Gary Oldman. Yeah, I know. Kevin Costner <laughs> and Gary Oldman in a this. movie called Criminal. <laughs> Which one is the criminal? <laughs> so I had the same. Now, you know, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Talking about going back in time, mm -hmm. we have another iteration. I shouldn't say another. We have a, a sequel to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yes, and you know what? Look right here. I have a big fat X next to it. Okay. Because I couldn't care less. <laughs> no one is waiting for the sequel to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. No one cares. <laughs> I do. It was overrated when it came out. I loved it. No one, ever, no one cares about it. It doesn't turn up on television and you watch it every time you see it. You just don't care. It could have receded into our distant memory and we'd all be the better Listen, for it. Listen, it's over the cultural divide. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, what Asia. am I going to bend trees and like walk <laughs> on leaves? The air. And, uh, uh, anyway, Michelle Yeoh is a favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. So we'll look and see. But one I think 
Does you, she beat people up with her walker your, in this one? <laughs> and your boys will probably go to. My boys. Oh, my boys. My actual, your, your actual boys. Children. Yes. Yeah, your children. Which one? Minions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that from oh, the Despicable 3 franchise? Right, Despicable Me franchise. <laughs> Although this would be the third one, so I guess you're right. It's Despicable 3. <laughs> nice. That's how they should market that. You should get paid, John. I know, I know. You should be paid for that idea. Despicable 3. <laughs> um, you know, there are so many interesting uh, films here. Like, obviously, most of these films will just either bomb or yeah. they'll just pass without a without any notice. Here's one that I think is really interesting. I just looked the trailer up on it. It's a documentary called Do I Sound Gay? Oh, all and right. It's about a guy, a, a gay male, who is becoming aware of his voice and the way um, gay men typically speak or atypically or, uh, or whatever. Stereotypically. Stereotypically speak. Yeah. And so he examines whether or not there is an essential quality to the gay boy side. I thought Excellent. that looked really interesting. And we didn't have too many uh, documentaries. And I can't imagine that being longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are a couple of others, just throw them out there. Aloha, mm -hmm. Cameron Crowe's. Cameron Crowe, I mean, still, still, still riding the waves of, of good will from, yeah. from his earlier work from Say Anything and Jerry Maguire. And almost famous. Yeah, that's the, the guy way. hasn't made a good movie <laughs> in 20 hasn't. years. But he has Bradley Cooper in this one, so no. maybe it's going to help him. I out. don't know. And it's going to be probably going to be depressing. What is it about? <laughs> it's about uh, some kind of a. Oh, I got it here. Uh, well, that doesn't say. Yeah, anything. it is. He's a defense contractor, and he uh, hooks up with a pilot. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds kind of. Hello. And, uh, Sounds like a real box office <laughs> smash. Oh, here's one yeah. that I don't know much about. Slow West. Slow West. Yeah, that, that does look really good. <laughs> it's a, a Western, which we don't get too many yeah. of these days. And it also looks like it's a good, smart Western um, with Michael Fassbender yeah. as, a, uh, as a really tough talk and slick gunslinger. And it looks interesting. I'm not sure what the premise is, but um, the trailer is compelling. And you know something? If you could spare me the time in a few months and come back, mm -hmm. we can talk about what we had. Yeah, that we can. Right. We can. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, we can look back on on the summer. It's always good. There's so much exciting product that comes out. Yeah. Um, you know, you get excited for everything. The summer is about anticipation yeah. and spectacle. And sometimes when you look back midsummer, you're surprised. Some things surprise you, other things don't. So uh, let, let's revisit. And this we can later. look back and see how many billions of dollars we cost the industry by our discussion. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Because I'm sure we turned off thousands. <laughs>